a battle ensues between two groups of people. One launching volleys of missiles, while the other charges axes, spears and hammers at hand. The latter group gaining the upper hand after the leader of the missile throwers is run down and summarily dispatched, causing panic and rooting the invaders. While a scene such as this may conjure up images of a medieval clash between feuding feudal lords in a small village somewhere in England, this skirmish took place long, long before this time, nearly a hundred thousand years before we as Homo sapiens even laid eyes on the lands we know as Europe. Modern humans, aka Homo sapiens sapiens, are estimated to be in existence for approximately 300,000 years and have, for the majority of this time, been residents exclusively of Africa. The out-of-Africa theory, regarded as the gold standard for explaining how modern humans found themselves, spread across the globe on every continent, save Antarctica, shows our ancestors as having evolved to the point of being considered modern humans in Africa, and then, as the theory states, basically walking out of Africa, colonizing the world. However, at the time of this exit from Africa, Homo sapiens were not the only human present on Earth. Living at the same time as us, interacting with us, and possibly even warring with us, were a myriad of other human species. Walking out of Africa, our ancestors had unwittingly stumbled into another human species territory, one that was most likely less than thrilled to have uninvited guests. Unknowingly, we had ventured into the territory of our older cousin, Homo neanderthalensis. Initial interactions may have ranged from peaceful trading to full-blown territorial battles, the latter being the more likely of the two. Evidence for this war between these two human species can be found in the resistance to the sapiens' expansion out of Africa. Homo sapiens tried to leave Africa several times and were ultimately thwarted again and again for over a hundred thousand years most likely by our Neanderthal cousins. Why else would a human species who had successfully walked across and colonized the second largest continent on the planet fail again and again to expand out over this landmass? Facing this adversary must have been a terrifying prospect for these sapiens. Although Neanderthal was slightly shorter than our prehistoric ancestors at the time, they were incredibly brawny and sported thick, powerful bodies with a much higher BMI. Some estimates have placed their strength at two or three times the strength of a modern-day human, and their short, powerful limbs made them lightning sprinters. Neanderthal favored melee aggression when hunting and used spear thrusts to take down enormous Ice Age creatures such as cave bears, woolly rhinoceros and wild boars. Logic would dictate that the same hunting tactics would be adopted in combat with sapiens. Hundreds of years of battles over resources, territorial disputes, and small skirmishes between clans of Neanderthals and Sapiens likely continued into the thousands of years, Homo sapiens trying repeatedly to push through the line of a human species far older and far stronger than us, seemingly much more determined than us, till something broke. Somehow, Sapiens gained the upper hand and were able to push out into the Middle East. Was this an all-out offensive, Neanderthal genocide in tow, or possibly a more peaceful blending of human species? Creating hybrids that, at this early point, allowed us passage in otherwise hostile territory. The notion that after a hundred thousand years of resisting human expansion, 
Neanderthal would simply allow sapiens to just move into their territory unhindered is rather unlikely. The mind-blowing recent discovery that humans battled Neanderthals for millennia before eventually overcoming them, subsequently conquering and settling in modern Europe and Eurasia, has brought about a curious notion. Do our stories of mythical human species, like many other myths, originate from some small nugget of truth? Could the stories that have been passed down from generation to generation of short, powerful humans with big noses, a fondness for axes and hammers and caves come from a real human experience that became blended into the stories we have today? Our first interactions with these terrifying adversaries undoubtedly left a mark in the culture and psyche of the people who moved out of the continent. At some point, these interactions most likely entered the stories told around fires, passed down generation to generation. In addition to these first interactions, Homo sapiens continued to encounter Neanderthals as they moved north and at some point even bred with them, with modern human groups outside of Africa having between one and 3% Neanderthal DNA. Neanderthals have a few distinct features making them recognizable to even the most unread amateur early humanoid enthusiast. An obscurely large nose, thick pronounced brow ridge, bearded face, short stocky stature with powerful limbs, and a brain just as big or even bigger than ours. They lived in complex social groups, made tools, and often inhabited caves. Though being shorter than prehistoric sapiens, they were just as heavy or even heavier. If you were to be asked to draw a Neanderthal from the description given above, the chances are that you would likely draw something a resident of the Dark Age Europe would likely describe as a dwarf. The similarities go far and beyond the physical, however. Their affinity for melee weapons with a notable absence of throwing spears and bows are what some experts believe to be the reason we, as the new species entering Europe, overcame our prehistoric foes. Using hit-and-run tactics with the advantage of ranged weapons allowed our sapien ancestors to take advantage of this so we could surely, slowly whittle down their numbers and encroach on their territory. Speaking of these simple hand weapons, dwarves in Germanic and Norse mythology are almost always depicted as having a close association with hammers and axes having crafted weapons such as these for the gods. At the time, our ancestors would have had to create a word for these mysterious, short, stocky people who they inhabited the same lands as, and were quite sure they had never heard of the word Neanderthal at that time. This led to each culture coming up with their own word, each ultimately being able to be translated into the word dwarf, in modern day English. Their presence was acknowledged, shunned, feared, accepted, and possibly even revered by the first humans entering Europe. Thousands of years of tales of these people being passed down generation to generation is the probable root of the wide variety of dwarven stories and tales. Exaggeration and embellishment over 10,000 years can undoubtedly turn facts into fanciful mythology. Sapiens and Neanderthals fought, bred, and possibly lived in separate groups on the same land masses for extended periods of time. But for how long did this continue and when did it end? Neanderthals are estimated to have gone extinct around 40,000 years ago 
Well, recent discoveries have found humans to have been in Europe 54,000 years ago. We both inhabited the same lands for at least 14,000 years, probably more. These separate groups of different human species living in periodic peace and war undoubtedly influenced their cultures, technology and stories of the people living there. Neanderthal sapien mixed families could have become a common sight in small areas where peace existed between the two for extended times. And the differentiation between these two species ultimately stopped at some point where hybrid offspring were indistinguishable as being neither dwarven or Neanderthal. Our mixing was not completely smooth sailing, however. Evidence has been shown that mixing with Neanderthals sometimes brought with it disease. Neanderthal DNA has been found to be associated with diseases such as type 2 diabetes, autoimmune disorders, prostate cancer, and even a susceptibility to severe COVID symptoms. Germanic mythology tells of dwarves bringing disease to humans and stealing babies, replacing them with deformed ones. Large amounts of evidence recently uncovered about these hybrids suggests that their offspring may have been sterile and even feeble offspring. Humans lived among dwarves for several millennia. Thousands of years passed while the lines between our species became ever more blurred and the distinction between man and dwarf became no more than a distant ancestral memory. The lion's share of humans hold dwarven lineage and descend from dwarven forefathers, mostly unknowingly. But our dwarven forefathers haven't been forgotten. Though in our fanciful stories of gods and magic, in our movies as likable, stubborn characters, and most importantly, they're in our blood. <laughs>